All right. Welcome, everybody, to episode two of uh, Indie Game Lab Studios, um, you know, playthrough with the de designer. Today, joining me, I've got Gregory, uh, a.k.a. Giga, a.k.a. designer of Master of Arms. So, hello, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Uh, th thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, so... Um, looks like we've got a couple players uh, learning the ropes of the game. I'm looking at it on my screen, so uh, we're ready to jump in at any point. Um, what's that that genre on Twitch called where you just watch people eat things? Watch oh. people eat things? Yeah, it's not like a whole fetish. You can just watch I them. wouldn't know. Right. What I do know is the players drew six cards. Oh, never mind. Of course, they're doing setup. Oh, they're doing setup stuff. Yep. Yeah. Um, all right. What are what are they doing? Let's jump in. I guess. Um, uh, yeah, so Master of Arms is a very basic deck builder in the very traditional style of Dominion. So for those who weren't, aw who weren't aware, uh, the original deck builder was Dominion. And in Dominion, all of the cards that you could buy during the game were decided at the beginning. They would always be available, they would always be there, but they would never change. More recent deck builders, um, Ascension, Star Realms... Prim primordial, primordial secrets, it, secrets. <laughs> the best as one well. of all. Uh, all have decks, markets that change over time as cards are bought or cycled out of the market. Mm -hmm. What I, 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 what I've been wondering because I've been, because this is the thing I think about sometimes, was why was that the evolution of deck builders? So essentially, that's what Master of Arms is. Master of Arms is an experiment in a static market with the player interaction of a game like Star Realms or Shards of Infinity. Nice. So, the, so both players have health, magic style, they'll play cards, they'll, have, they'll buy cards, they'll do damage to each other, last player standing wins. Excellent. What they're doing right now is a drafting phase to decide part of the market, and the rest of the market is randomized from cards that were not that were not available to them to choose. Oh, okay, cool. So there's a whole like drafting phase before we even get going. Okay, so this is the static market. These ten cards. Yep. Theoretically. So it looks like, so every game will always have the cards, the top four cards, up there. Oh, okay. Which are copper, silver, gold, and the battle axe. Nice. People probably will buy copper unless certain cards are actually in play. Mm -hmm. If you look over at the side, the notable one would probably be the slingshot. It, about halfway down. If you look at the slingshot, it does damage for copper wow. played on the turn. So that would be a reason for copper. copper. Nice. There aren't a lot of reasons to buy copper other than that. Okay, so let's let's do let's do a little card anatomy here. So what what am I looking at here? So on the slingshot, for instance, we've got zero and zero on the top and five on the bottom there. Right. So the the card design that I went with was the assumption that the player would most want to would most care about the information at the top because it would be in their hand the most often. Mm -hmm. So the money that the card can give you is the number in the yellow circle because gold, gold money. The number in the red circle is the damage the card will do will do to the to the opposing player. So red, blood, that's the reasoning there. The cost of the card to buy it from the market in your deck is the in the purple circle down mm -hmm. at the bottom. Okay. And if a card has a fancy effect like slingshot does and like silver or gold do not, mm -hmm. it is it, it will be in the text box in the middle. Great. Fairly straightforward um, interface. With, although I will note that your game, Primordial Secrets, is a much cleaner way of doing it all along the side. But it's a separate issue. <laughs> um, Again, this is yeah. an experiment. I was going for functionality, not beauty, as you can see from all of these pictures. So yeah. So can we ignore all of these card stacks on this right hand side then? Like these selector decks, like once the game gets going, we don't need to Pretty worry much. about those. Okay. We have want, want something to talk about. We want to take a look at some of the cards that I'm a fan of that aren't in play. But 
Yes. Okay. Those yeah. can largely be ignored okay. for purposes of a single game. Okay, so all we're working with here is the cards that they start with. Oh my gosh, I'm having such trouble with my mouse. Um, the cards that they start with, which looks like oh, Chainmail and Copper and Dagger. Okay, excellent. Yep. And then, I'm not a Game Master, so I can't see that, but oh, okay. I assume... I assume the stream can. And so. then this, <laughs> then then this, um, what's this basic market and selector market. Okay, and that's all the cards that we're going to work with. Oh, so what do they have? They have all these cards over on the left hand side too. What's going on there? The left hand side. Oh, uh, those were look like. So eat. There are ten car copies of any individual card that you would that you can buy in the game in your deck. Okay. Once those ten cards have been bought by one or both players. They, no, no more can be purchased. The cards over the left were the cards used during the drafting phase to figure out which deck to Oh, to select them. Okay, got it. So those also we can kind of ignore. Yeah. All right, excellent. So let's see. The cards that they are playing with this game yes. are the gold plate mail. Cost so that four. Is, okay. So that's block and money. Uh, block in this game works similarly to Shards and Vindy, if you've played that, where you reveal a block from your hand at the at the instant your, play, your opponent does damage to, to to prevent it. The way I have implemented in this game is damage is all dealt at the end of your turn, so you're not going to do weird things like I'll throw in a dagger to deal with your four defense and then hit you with an actual attack. Got it. Okay. That just that's just a little bookkeeping thing I did because I didn't want I didn't want that to be a strategy. Uh, the backpack, which is mostly a way to cycle through your deck a little faster. Nice. The halberd, which is one of many things. Oh, it's expensive. Yeah, because there are many things going on. Yeah, I see. It it might not be worth it. I haven't tested this game into oblivion. Sure. Although, I'll just. We can discuss what if we when we get that far. I can discuss how uh, I actually think the game actually works, <laughs> and whether it's even a good game. But that's a separate issue. <laughs> looks uh, like Panda the tree. Uh, looks like the are the players that looks like they've uh, we've gotten the first play here, or it looks like yeah. um, Nerd is playing his hand and deciding what to buy. Yep, he's going with the. We already had the first damage done, actually. Yeah, oh, I, saw, okay. I saw that. I missed that. Sorry, I'm uh, distracted. So he bought a backpack. So Nerd is going for, like, card draw. Respect. Uh, and... That makes sense. If you look down at the bottom left corner, uh, the Grave Robbery card is actually in play, which is a oh, card that yeah. I'm fan of, that I'm proud of in, in design-wise. When you card you play has draw, you may draw this card from your discard pile for one of the draws. Okay, so you can just keep, and then it, it's worth two gold. Okay, nice. So that's a good way to get your economy rolling. I, I don't I see not many of the cards in the main market have, in the selector market, have much uh, buying power. So it looks like in order to get to these big expensive cards, they're going to have to get some silver and gold first. Or, or uh, the gem, it. the gem is pretty nice. Oh but... right, one and a draw one. Okay, nice. And then yeah. gra and then also grave robbery is just strictly better than silver if you can afford it. Yes, got it. But uh, other than that, yeah. Cool, because unlike Dominion, there is uh, you can play any an unlimited number of cards from your hand. Uh, yes. When you draw them, excellent. Okay, so it looks like Drakow is down to twenty nine health. Nerd is also at 29 health. So we've gotten some some chip damage so far. Yep. That's pretty much what the daggers are doing. Nice. They're basically doing chip damage. You start with a few daggers in your deck. And as well as one chain mail, which is why they've so far only probably why they've only taken 29 damage instead of 30. Ah uh, yes. Down to 29 instead of down to 28. Or it's hard. <laughs> so I don't see. Okay, so and then the damage thing that the like basically your equivalent of victory points, the way to win the game is to get the damage cards that with the number in the upper uh, right. So it looks like the main ways to do that is to get battle axes, oh my god, very expensive, or a cursed sword, or the halberd, 
just or the slingshot, away. which actually is in play. Oh yes, the slingshot. The oh yes, the slingshot with the copper. Oh, and is Drakow gonna go for it? He's going for it. Slingshot. I like the flavor of that. Like David versus Goliath, the person with all the copper, the poor person, <laughs> whatever. It's also just to me the idea of you're literally taking your copper coins and flinging them at your yeah, planet. yeah. That also yeah. Okay. I think it might be better to use coins than actual cards for coins, if that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I also hope we, I would like to point out we had the earliest plug in the history of the show with promo all secrets at, mentioned in the at, first 30 seconds. For the record, I and, didn't bring it up, but I will, I'll talk about it all day. But yeah. <laughs> and uh, it, I think the players are actually having quite a lot of fun as they discuss the possibilities of the cards makes yeah. it looks like they're having the most fun with i mean here's here's a good one already so we've got grave robbery oh actually it's not that exciting when he's just playing it from his hand but uh still this is a good amount of uh purchasing power we've got is that five purchasing power looks like five yeah yeah anything which uh is slingshot if you wanted to go that way banditry um, slingshot is... okay Especially since I, I wasn't watching. Had, uh, Drac picked up all that much card draw? Because if he hasn't, Ban Drink could definitely be annoying. Oh yeah, right. No, yeah. So so far, Drac I think has. Uh, sorry, we we're talking about the cards a little bit. Okay, he's yeah. got a slingshot, and is that it? That's the only thing he's bought. Oh, and something in his hand. Uh, no. A, oh, no. Looks like he only... Did he have to buy chainmail? No, you, that you come with chainmail. Yeah. I don't see anything else in his it deck. Could be, it could be that he declined to buy a backpack. Backpack is not, technic, is not technically card positive. Yeah, okay. Draw two discard. Because it, if he bought in his first round through, there are seven copper in your deck. So his other turn would have been two copper. He might have just declined to buy a backpack. Okay. Which, as I said, is card neutral, so it's not even... Eh. It's not necessarily a bad idea to decline it. I don't know, man. Getting getting that choice a little bit, a little bit of a choice of what, what five cards you want to work with. I like that. Certainly, I probably would have personally, mm -hmm. but it, it, it's, not, it, it's a choice I could understand. Yeah, sure. Especially in an earlier version of the game where backpack was actually card negative. That oh, was a bad design choice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, some pinging. Oh, I guess Drakow's deciding what to buy with four monies. Or Nerd could still be looking at oh, all so the Oh, Nerd's still, options. yeah, he's still got five. He's nice defensive. Oh, they're talking about how plate mail and helmet are the exact same, except plate mail gives you a purchasing power. Oh, eh, I'm sure it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll add it to the notebook, but I'm right. probably not gonna. If we get if we get into that, I might. Uh, there's a decent chance I'll probably never care enough to fix it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, it's true. Yeah, yeah. It's a it's an interesting thing. Is it? It's a question of is it good to have cards that are just strictly better than other cards in a game like this or do you want everything to be balanced such that nothing is ever 100 percent always better to buy than than something else mm -hmm. like for in this in this case i think they were just talking about you would never buy a helmet right because there's no upside o over the plate mail uh, but that's also only true because this is a specific market that's out. It's possible yes. that helmet could be out of the gold plate mail or vice or even or vice versa, or even neither thing could be out. Yeah. And it'd be a really low blocking game. Or if this is a game where both players want lots of block, like of course they'll buy the plate mail first, but then helmet will still be there for more op additional options later in the game if they really want to get all the blocking they can. Mm -hmm. Drac is complaining that uh, nerd is stealing his strategy. <laughs> Oh, did they both get a slingshot? They did. Uh-oh. Two slingshots. All right. Copper and slingshots. This is, um, I, I've played a lot of Dominion in my life, and uh, there are some strategies that are just so, like, parasitic and, like, memey. We have a horrible realization by somebody that he misread a card now, and his strategy is null and void. Oh, excellent. <laughs> 
Uh, it's ner- that nerd misreading grave robbery or something. It has to do with uh, what kind of co- uh, card could be played because you collected something. Uh, he messed read it and thought he could play more gold cards, and it really says copper cards. I oh, think. copper only. Ah, uh, yes. yes. Slingshot is specifically copper cards. That's the thing. You got to stay poor in order to be the David in the story. Yep. There's a lot of regret right now on the table. <laughs> You may trash a card from hand to gain a card. Oh, yes, trashing. I love making the deck thinner. What's that, blacksmithing? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's what I would be buying every turn. That's my favorite kind of mechanic. Here comes the chain mill. Although the caveat to that statement is that what's inter- so in this game, it's certainly good. Trashing is always good. In most deck builders, it's always good. I did notice when I was playing Dominion a couple of months ago, because I was con- I was contemplating things about my- about my game, mm-hmm. you actually don't necessarily want to trash in Dominion because you are pl- action limited. Trashing can actually result in you just having me having cards you can't play. It's it's interesting. Yeah. No. Yeah. There's definitely you definitely. I mean, in Dominion, I mean, my strategy is always the same in Dominion. It's uh, I've played it way too much, but like. Get, get like just buy but, the first buy cards that have plus two actions until there are no more cards that have plus two actions and then figure out what you do with the rest of your strategy <laughs> and, players are also comparing this to dominion yeah and uh drag is saying that nerd is using dominion strategies against him yeah that's highly probable because in point of fact a lot of my cards yeah. look a lot like dominion cards and that is because yeah if you so what i suppose this might be a decent time to get into it if you're going to use a static market, there are some things that you're just, just makes sense to have. Basic money cards so make sure you're not gonna, just going to be like infinitely poor and the game's not going to take literally for all, all literally the rest of history. Yeah. Um. Basic damage, co- basic damage, or in Dominion case, point cards. Um. Is there another example? Probably there's probably something similar to Gem and Dominion, though I don't know what it is off the top of my head. Hmm. Um Yeah. So Drakau, I think I just saw Drakau have four to spend and do four damage, com- comboing the slingshot with with some coppers. Excellent. So that's that was spicy. Or actually he only had three to spend, but four damage, because the other the fifth card was a dagger. Hmm. Yep, makes sense. So that's a that's a healthy chunk. The slingshot's going to make. It looks the game like Drex finding out the power of a backpack right about now. Ah yes. Ah uh, yes. Yep. There we go. Discard that. And now copper, copper, slingshot, copper, copper. Oh yeah. boy. <laughs> okay. So yeah, slingshot's going to make this a quick game. If until people. Honestly, until, honestly, until people start buying gold pl- pl- plate mail. Yeah, I know. Which they might not. They might just both legitimately choose to go full aggro. Full aggro. Beat their opponent down. Nerd seems to keep taking Grave Robbers. Yep, Grave Robber. He's got one card that draws cards. He's actually got two. I think I saw a gem a moment ago. Okay, yeah. Oh, yeah, he's got a backpack and a gem. So he's got two ways to reuse those Grave Robbers. Uh, regarding aggro, my, a card I, I really like when I play when I play my own game for aggro is the Cursed Sword. Oh yeah. Because uh, I, I played a game recently where I won, but I only had one health left. Nice. I went full curse sword aggro. I like that. It was uh, it was a time. Yeah, slingshot's an interesting one. I I think this is. I mean, it's going to be strong early. It's going to get them low early, but I think later on it's going to, going to fall off if uh, mm-hmm. if they fill their deck with better car- cards that are better than copper. Yeah. I'll, I mean, I'll be interested to see where that curve sort of flattens, and it's better to just get things like cursed swords. Or or just gold to try and get to the, get it to the battle axe. Yeah. So they each only have one slingshot, so they're not that incentivized to like go all in on that strategy not yet and, so, and certainly nerd has a backpack so he has a little bit more control over what he over mm-hmm. his deck than drac does unless drac picked up a backpack when i wasn't, when I wasn't oh, yeah. watching 
Yeah, put your slingshot in your backpack with all the copper, and and then have have if you can get line it up so one of your turns is just slingshot and copper, and then one of your turns is all your other good cards. Mm -hmm. I just That's called this death by a thousand cuts. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it is that. There is a finite amount of comboing you can do. <laughs> there are cards in the game that. I've at least there used to be. Yeah. So if you look over at the side of Boomerang, uh, Boomerang is very much that in the selector decks. Because it's a small amount of damage and you draw a card. Nice. I I've had games where I just literally bought Boomerangs all the time and just threw Boomerangs over and over at my opponent. <laughs> nice. Yeah, so we've got... Looks like these pink cards are in general the damage cards. Yep. Nice. The color coding on the card is pink is damage, yellow is money... Orange is both. Gray is neither. What is the counter to the anti-grave robber strategy? Hmm. What, what can he do here to stop this grave robber strategy from destroying him? So that is a good discussion about what I learned from this game. <laughs> the answer is... Depends what's in his deck. Probably aggro before grave robbery becomes meaningful is the best option. Um, but it does bring up the interesting thing I learned about static market market deck Ooh, builders. Gold. Ooh, someone got gold. All right. That I think gives them a chance because that may, that'll make it much easier for me to go to battle axe and battle axe does just a lot of damage. Did he get rid of... Oh, did he trash his... He blacksmithed his uh, slingshot into a gold piece, it looks like. Interesting. Okay, he's... he's I, I like that. Getting rid of... Yeah, upgrading your... Your slingshot did a few a few good points of damage. Now you don't want to water your down, deck down with copper anymore. Get rid of it. Upgrade to gold. Do the big stuff. Especially like, because... You, you, he's you, complaining you, he cannot use that gold coin right away. It has to go into his deck or something? It's probably... Yeah, sounds right. Yeah, I mean, you're when you yep. theor theoretically when you gain cards, it goes to your discard pile, right? So it's a discard pile or some gain yeah. pile set from discard. I can't yeah. exactly remember which, but okay. it, it's one. It's something along those lines, and it only matters if you have a ton of card draw. Yeah. Um. Okay. The, the other thing I'll note is blacksmithing. If he gets lucky, he could blacksmith the gold into the battle axe if he really wanted to. Oh, yeah. He's got a blacksmith. He's got options now. Yeah. Okay. Looks like Drakao is shuffling, so he's got a chance to draw the gold. He drew... Not this turn, but he's got another blacksmith in his hand. Does he have anything good, Does he have anything good to blacksmith? Uh, let's see. He could upgrade a silver into a five cost thing. Upgrade a copper into a silver. I would just upgrade a copper into a silver or something. Or a dagger into just a silver. Just a slingshot probably, yeah. yeah. And meanwhile, is that a second slingshot? Yep, that's a second second slingshot for Nerd. So Yeah. Okay, so now now they've got distinct strategies. Nerd is trying to end the game with slingshots and coppers, and Drakau is going big. Or at least that's what it seems to be. It's not that said. Nerd's also one of the that I recall was all the grave robbery, so it's not quite that simple. But yeah, it's something mm -hmm. like that. Yeah, I um, guess Nerd's got two different two different angles: slingshots mm -hmm. plus grave robbers. Yeah, sounds like my kind of party. <laughs> Sling an eyeball. Is this a helper? Hang on, one. Two. He's only got four to spend. I don't know why he pinged Halberd. Halberd? What? Oh, Hal Halberd. Halberd, yeah. Halberd, yes. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> but I think, okay, he's just looking about what to blacksmith. Probably, yeah. So he could upgrade a he's silver. He's trying to maximize his, the value. He can either take it as four or five right now. Yeah. That's what the issue is. Yep. Banditry is not terrible. 
No. You could upgrade silver into a banditry. I don't know. I would rather upgrade one of my weak cards, like a copper or a dagger, into a silver. It looks like that's unless, what he's doing. Um, unless he thought his best way to aggro was to just upgrade his cards, all, cards of blacksmithing, into huge things really yeah. fast. Okay, he went with it. So he upgraded a copper into a silver, and then he has three to spend. Is that another silver? He's Not thinking sure. about I it. Like I'm a spectator, so I can't actually search decks, but... <laughs> oh. It looks like he probably picked up a silver. Oh, no. Something. he's Okay, he must have had four to spend, so he's going to get a gem. Okay, cool. Okay. For to spend. Okay, nice. A gem and a silver. That's a good, just... Okay, another blacksmithing. Does he have... Oh, he has... He has two blacksmiths in his deck. I like it. Okay, yeah. So I, I think he does definitely have a chance here. I, I not... I have I frankly haven't tested my own game enough, but it, it's pro it seems like they both have win, win conditions here. So it's not it's not just over or anything. Oh my god! It is interesting <laughs> because wow, that's a lot of money. Oh, Battle axe time. Yep, that was the concern. <laughs> that might be a mortal blow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, because as I was about, as I was saying, keep trying to say, what I learned from this game and and looking critically at Dominion is. I think the reason that games have moved towards dynamic markets is because in a game like this, even even with the increased player interaction that this game has relative to, to Dominion, it still works out as most of the time you look at the deck, you make a single or maybe decision or maybe two decisions about what sort of car, what like two or three cards you're going to buy for the rest of the game. And then you just execute that, and you see, and, and and you go, and you see which algorithm works better. Yeah. Um, that's fun though. I I don't think that, I don't think that's necessarily awful. No, it's 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 fine for what it is. Yeah. But I think the fact that the game state changes so much more in a game like Star Realms mm -hmm. is why games have generally moved towards that dynamic market over this stop over this more traditional market style. Um. So, the, so the players say there's nothing that costs six in the market, and this has happened a couple times. So that's probably true. That'll happen maybe sometimes. You get adjusted market. for that, so the person with six doesn't have to only use five. Oh yeah, I'm looking over in the cards we're not using. There's a sword breaker that costs six. It's just not in play in this particular game. Yep. And a pack mule. Ooh, I like that card. There's a couple. That's there's not a lot of sixes, but there's a couple. Mm-hmm. And that's and that's another thing with the style that I set up here, mm -hmm. because I don't have a huge number of static market cards. There, there is a chance of a gap in costs unless I went to an even more complex setup phase, mm -hmm. which I certainly could do. That would be a reasonable decision to make. Um, <laughs> but it also me works means that. I sp I'm spending a lot of time basically making the static market work better mm -hmm. when there's an argument to be made that it is simply a less interesting mechanic. So, sure. is it worth it? I don't know. Um, although what I will say is this game, as I said, was an experiment because I have some fancy ideas for another deck builder and I wanted to see if I had to, be had to go to the effort of making a dynamic market. Mm -hmm. <laughs> The answer is probably it's better if I make a dynamic market. Um, and, yeah. And, and because, and actually, I don't think this is a great game just by its premise, but it also, it was, it was an experiment. Yeah. It was a very useful experiment. For no, me. I like it's that. It's supposed to be a good game. I like that. I like talk. I like the, I mean, the, the thought no, process. It's something big. The Halibut. Oh, the Halbert. Okay. Cool. Halbert. And Howard heals because that yeah, makes sense. That's good. And then meanwhile, Drekow has an awful turn here of all starting cards. 
It happens in it all does. deck builders. No matter what the market's like, you're sometimes just going to have a bad hand. Indeed. That is not something you're going to be escaping. <laughs> oh, and then I'm looking, I'm looking ahead at Nerd's turn. He's got a slingshot with no copper in hand. So that's, <laughs> that's rough, too. Oh, but yeah. a, a backpack to bail him out. Okay. Worst case scenario, you could just discard the slingshot if you if you want, if he didn't doesn't draw any copper. All right, he's drawing. Oh, he oh <laughs> he drew two grave robberies. <laughs> yep, takes two grave robbers. He's got a third in hand. Oh, that's that's gonna hurt. <laughs> and then yeah, slingshot and dagger. Oh, you know what I like with the backpack? I just realized it combos well with things that only block, because. You don't yes. mind discarding things that block on your turn. Yes. Ooh, that's that's a I fun. I just bought three backpacks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Okay, so with backpacks, I think what so either he's do... an old lady or a kleptomaniac. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's a grave robber with lots of backpacks, and they work together. I think, and then the the third part, the third piece of that puzzle, I think, is some defensive cards with block and no other effects, things to discard. To yeah. the backpack without any drawback. Mm -hmm. uh, there's some interesting little things in this that like Dominion can't ever have. I like, I mean, the thing with the block. Um, and that I think is an and is the advantage of also the increased player interaction in yeah. later deck builders, yep. Shards Infinity, Star Realms. Yep. Um, uh, the free, I, I don't know, the Lord of the Rings deck builder. Either. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I like that. I like having to, like, yeah, you, you want to do your own thing. You want to build your combos and engines, but you also have to pay attention what to, to what your opponent's doing because the best strategy is going to be built around countering theirs. Mm -hmm. I mean, if, in a perfectly balanced game, I don't know if that's necessarily true in this per particular iteration, but... Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> I think another thing that this has over Dominion is you can tell that the pictures were all done by the same person. That's right, <laughs> yes. The, the art is definitely better in this game than Dominion, I will say. <laughs> I can only assume, I can only assume, assume that this is an excellent joke. <laughs> No, I, I don't. I don't. I don't personally hate Dominion art, but like I actually have heard that as a complaint from uh, many reviewers is that the Dominion art is pretty basic. Huh. Dracow's deck is sweet. He's he's using those blacksmiths. He's like got no coppers left in his deck hardly. It's just like all silver pieces. He just needs. Is it going to be too late? Hey Giga, is this game lasting longer than you thought it would? Because I thought. You, you thought this would go quicker, but it looks like they're really getting into a little toe-to-toe -to -toe slugfest here, but you know, not with big damage, like small yeah. damage. More of a strategic usually I, usually I expect someone to pick up aggro, but it doesn't look like either either player really has, other than those early slingshots. So oh, this is perhaps a little happened. slower than I was expecting. Um, <laughs> although it looks like... The there was just a battle axe there. Out. They have an idea Boom. what the cards do. Yeah, just as Joe was saying, this game has taken a while. Chunk, eight damage. <laughs> Um, yeah, no, it's, Although it's, it looks like it might, might not last much longer. Yep. He just needs to draw that battle axe a couple more times. Yep. Um, yeah, both players kind of ended up doing, uh, yeah, not going straight for damage, but getting some sort of engine going and then going, and then there's always that in every deck builder, there's that corner you want to turn, right? Where it's like, okay, I've got my engine, I've got my like, you know, resource development, and now it's time to end the game. Which actually reminds me of how I used to play a certain 4X game. Yeah. Um, if you, I don't know if you ever played much Civ or anything, but mm -hmm. Galactic Solutions 2, my favorite strategy would be to early game, have like everything be researched all the time, and then at a certain point, just go, just turn off research and go full, and go full manufacturing and just crank out warships. Nice. So I never did it quite at the same level some people on the forums did, yeah, but nice. it was a, it's a fun way to play that game. Drakow just had 11 to spend. I love that. Wow. He, he opted to go with a gem and a halberd. Okay. 
so the halberd presumably to help help him stay alive against the battle axe rather than just trying to out, out, out speed nerd there's a lot of defensive cards available so like and that's the thing with this game I, I, i'm seeing is that like it could be you could have a a uh, particular market that's just going to make a very long game if it's like all blocking and healing and less about the damage stuff. Mm -hmm. And that and the, the funny part about that is that to a little bit, a little bit that extent depends on the players because mm -hmm. of the of the partial drafting phase. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think you could also put in a uh, organ black market whenever you get hit by a black uh, a battle axe. You have some options. Mm. <laughs> That'd be a, that'd be a fun card, or uh, or just like an extra mechanic. Is, is that another so five damage? Would be runner? like, um, Four. battle axe does damage, and then an opponent obtain organ black market thing. <laughs> <laughs> I think you would need like a a dungeon to harvest them in uh -huh. order to be have the organs available. That'd be. Hilarious in a certain kind of way. <laughs> five, five to spend. One damage from a dagger, which is going unblocked. Nice. Okay. But only. But unfortunately, five to spend. it probably yeah. won't matter. Yeah. Five. Yeah, Drakau has. The blacksmithing, I, I mean, that's kind of the strategy. I would have been gravitated, gravitated towards myself, but I think whatever nerd did ended up being the faster solution. Which mm -hmm. is just a combination of, like, some... his, his that's engine, that Grave Robber. Yeah, Grave Robber engine plus Slingshot plus getting a battle axe. Like, that's, that's going to end it, I think, before Overlord's black, blacksmithing... I mean, his deck is so sick, though. It's, like, got no coppers left. It's, like, all gems and silver. It's just, like, it might be too late. Yeah. It reminds me of Terraform Mars. Mm -hmm. This is a game. What For for a while... So, I, I have this friend who's amazingly good at board games. and It's, I, it's hard for me to beat him in any game. Terraform Mars is one of the few where I have a chance. Um... For for a while, I was actually doing pretty well because he hadn't quite gotten a handle on the fa on the. Okay, yes, you can have a great engine, but if the game just ends before you score a point, you have a problem. Yeah. Uh, so it's it's so in that game, some of the knowledge of how to win is is a feel for. Okay, the game's going the game's going to end in time at future time X, so I need to start scoring points now. Mm -hmm. Um. Which is the same sort of thing you were describing with this game. When do you go for damage? Or building your engine. Right. <clears throat> oh, let me... Okay, so... Yeah, Nerd had another good turn with some damage. But we're back to Drakow. Banditry. Okay, that's good. Just blacksmithing. Upgrade something else. Well, I, just, I saw a nerd discard the grave robber, so that may or may not have been very <laughs> been a very efficient banditry. I mean, grave robber isn't like I feel like I feel like uh, the players are overrating it. It's just I mean, it replaces your draw, so it's not like you get to yes, draw it in addition that. to other stuff. It's just guaranteeing that there's a silver on top of your deck is all it's really doing. True. Uh, I so I think they're over. I mean, it's a good it's a good card. I like it. I like the design. It's just uh, I think I don't think it's as unbeatable as as they're making it out to be. Mm -hmm. Okay, battle axe, battle axe for Drakau, and a gem. His whole deck is gems. It it is fun if you just had it fun in this game just have a deck that's just, just nearly infinite draw a couple terminals oh yeah doesn't beat that there's nothing beats the per, all full draw deck okay his next hand isn't that exciting though sad how is Drakau still getting bad hands with all of these blacksmithing he's been doing I mean there there are 10 cards that you'd like to get rid of yeah and okay. then there and then he also bought a slingshot which makes 11 
Oh my god, is Nerd gonna end the game with perfect health with all two halberds healing him? I would doubt it since Drac dies to one battle axe. Five. But. Uh, did he just pull the entire copper deck into his discard pile? Yep. Looks like it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Eric's loading, loading the slingshot for the final damage. Okay, it's just his deck is stacked with, for slingshot optimization. Oh, so, so, so that was actually intentional then? I guess so. He yeah, had five beautiful. to spend or whatever. There must have been five copper left. He's like, let's go. That's beautiful. That is horrendous. <laughs> if that's if that's the right if that's the right thing to do. I mean, it this might game be. is horribly broken <laughs> and awesome. All right, silver is getting upgraded. Nope, copper is getting upgraded to a silver. It's too late for that. It's too late for that, Dracow. Oh well, and another gem. Okay, he's gonna die, but he's gonna die rich. Yes. Nerd looking to even his record to one and one with this victory. Nice. Uh, I, I think I, I think I beat beat Nerd in a practice match in a practice match a week or so ago. Must have been two weeks ago. Yeah. Uh oh, we might have a mortal wound. Uh oh. Oh God. Uh, sorry, I was typing. Slingshot full of copper. Ah, uh, so battle axe oh, and a plus battle axe. Yep. loaded. That'll slingshot. be game. That's a lot of damage. Love it. Yep. Um. <laughs> I've I've never seen anyone just pick up. Do we remember how we uh, before, got everybody into one room at the end? Uh, Works for me. Yeah, uh, Joe. If you want to bring people in, uh, just pull them into this uh, the Zoom. And they uh, and we can have a, a post game chat. Uh, so that was Master of Arms, and I loved every minute of it. Let's get to, um, or actually, I'm just want to poke through Drakow's deck because that's. You want to see how you want to see just how much stuff he had. I am curious. I am a little curious as well. Silver, 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 gem. All right, so he had silver. That's two starter cards at least. Look at all this. Silver, silver. Yeah, man, his deck is sick. <laughs> Banditry, silver, gem, gem. All right, another dagger. He's That's got a battle axe there. Cards. Blacksmithing, so the two blacksmithing gem. Okay, we had another copper Five, left. Six. Another copper. All right, I've invited them in. Hopefully, we'll see them shortly here. Cool. Okay, and then in, in his hand, he has two copper, a halberd, a gem, and a gem. So we ended up with what was that? How many gems? One, two, three, four. That's a lot of starter cards. That's why Five, it's blacksmithing. six. Yeah, for all the blacksmith. You... I, I think sometimes he used the blacksmith on. Um, non. Yeah, we can close all that. You can actually kind of close out a Discord if you wanted to. Yeah, you know, the room. All right, and I'm gonna go to this view and see if we can get some people in to our little chat here. They're just shutting down Tabletop Simulator and other stuff to help with lag. Oh, with lag. Okay, right on. Mm -hmm. I'll probably do the same. Okay. Because my poor laptop isn't the worst, but uh, it's still a laptop. Hello. Hello, hello. Welcome, welcome. What's up, um, nerd? Uh, yeah, we talked already, but yeah, definitely an interesting game. Definitely it's very similar to Dominion. Did you like it better or worse than Dominion? Um, 
to be fair, I think this this game feels like a prototype version of Dominion. Yeah, I believe it. Yes. So yeah. So let's see. Yeah, I mean, I guess I can start with the feedback or anything uh, else. Yeah, just I'll, I'll... your thoughts on the game and the things you liked and the things you would say. I, if I could change things, what would that be? Oh, um, uh, okay, I guess I'll start. And like I mentioned, very similar to Minion in that regard. I love um, those kind of deck builders. And I mean, um, like I mentioned, it feels like a prototype. There are not as many synergies. Um, as they're in different games, but there definitely are some, as I think I demonstrated enough in this game. And um, yeah, I mean, it can be definitely uh, developed to be, uh, it has definitely the potential be, to be a full game. I think there definitely needs to be a bit of tweaking for some cards, like the gold plate mail and the helmet are basically the same card, but one card is just better than the other cards. Mm -hmm. And yeah, also the um, game also feels like it's a bit a bit too slow because you can't really get money. Um, there are not really ways to make money. The gold is very expensive, and there aren't many cards that give you a lot of gold in that regard. I mean, I only were able to get some expensive card with my grave robber and backpack combo, where I can basically get a, a silver from my discard pack indefinitely, and the damage is also. I mean, um, Joe also was here for um, in question if this changed every time, which is the case. And there could be also a case where there's no slingshot or no curse sword. There are only, I don't know, cards that give you more money. Mm -hmm. And that regard, it also makes the game way more slower because the only card that can actually deal damage is the bad legs and right. the, well, the two daggers you have from the start. And at worst case, there are a lot of defensive cards there and cards that can heal you, so you can't even kill your opponent and it's just a stalemate. I was I was kind of seeing that as well with a, a certain static market with like all block cards and not enough damage cards. Um, yeah, there'd be some interesting maybe tweaking to do to make it so... <laughs> to ensure that there's like an actual good fun dynamic game there there's got to be maybe some some rules about i don't know at least have i think it goes when it chooses the opening deck that you can yeah. make instead of, like you create different groups like it has to choose one from like a chinese menu you have to some from group a some from group b some from oh, group yeah. c and then the groups would have would solve these problems group a Probably, would make sure yeah. there's some offensive things group b would be defensive and group c would be you know a wild card maybe or something like that that's interesting you know, and, yeah and that way you can kind of control it with while still leaving it random um yeah besides that like i mentioned um i think maybe some of the money cards could be a little bit less expensive because like the gold with seven money i mean i was able to achieve seven money three times in the game and uh, the other player only one time so yeah gold is uh, actually feels like the real gold can't get it really. <laughs> <laughs> what I will say about the lack of a lower price damage card is there was one in a previous version of the game. The reason it's not there is because surprisingly, I wasn't expecting this. It turned out the existence of that card basically made aggro nearly unbeatable. I see. Yeah, yeah. So got, yeah, if it's if it's a, quite a cheap card or whatever, then you can rack the damage quite quickly, yeah. and before someone can really get the engine going. That's what I was trying to do early game, and then it, it, I kind of got sidetracked a bit. Yeah, but yeah, it's all good. Uh, I will say, cursed sword is my favorite way to play aggro. Yeah, I did look at that, but I didn't. I didn't notice it until mid game, and I was. I was like, ah, <laughs> oh, it's too late. It's too late. It's too late uh, now. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That looks like the actual cheapest. I've got, I've got a few part. comments. Um, so no, it's a, it's a really cool game. Oh, I'm lagging a bit, I think. Um, oh, no, my... you're fine. No, no. Least... Can you guys hear me? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Hello? Yes, Hello. we can hear you. Hello? Hello? I think it's on this side. I think so. I, I'm fine. Sorry. I, I, think I, was, I, thought, <laughs> I thought I was lagging for a bit. 
Oh, my bad, my bad. I, oh, I'm getting a, I'm getting a warning saying that my connection's unstable. Well, what's, well, what's, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll talk, and if I get cut out, go for I it. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, if, if it cuts out, I will, I will, I'll write up my response, which is, which is fine as well. But okay, so basically, I got to So yeah, no, I enjoyed the game. Oh, a couple. Darn it. Uh process at the beginning of the game where we we hand over this the selector cards back and forth um as it stands i th i think you would just be i think there's i don't i don't see the reason why that method is being used because ultimately we we each have a unilateral start right our decks are exactly the same so the cards that we pick to go into the selector market whatever synergies that we're aiming for both players have an equal opportunity to utilize those synergies. Now, for example, if you had um, different kind of starts, like say someone had a more aggressive start and maybe there's someone who had a slower start but with maybe more buy buying cards in the original deck, then that, would, that selection process would make sense because then the, the guy who's the more aggressive guy would be like, yeah, I'm going to try to put as many aggressive cards into the pool as possible. And then the guy with all the money would be like, okay, I want to put all the most expensive stuff into the pool. But if, if you have a unilateral start, then that drafting method, it, 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 it's, it's just a bit of a, to put it bluntly, it's a bit of a time waster. And I think you would just be better off shuffling and then dealing X number of random cards and then adding, and then just doing it like that. Uh, the black and uh, the other, the other, the next thing is the blacksmithing card. It's it's too slow to for me to to use because what happens is, you you play the blacksmithing card, you lose a card from your hand, and then you don't get anything until a future future turns. So, effectively, I'm losing two cards from my hand, for for nothing in the in the short in the immediate term, and yet although the upgrade is is too more expensive than than the card you trash. It's. I feel it's. It's. It's a bit too slow. You either need to make the 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 maybe maybe three cost more or something to to make up for the fact that you're you're not really doing much for that turn. So I I I, I, I don't know. It's up to you. That's, I, I, that's, it's up to you how you want to deal with that. But I just I just felt that the blacksmithing. Oh, although it does thin your deck. That's that's a fair shout. It mm. does thin your deck. So it you does are, not. It does not. You always have the same amount of cards. That's yeah, but but deck. normally, yeah, but normally when you buy a card, you you make your deck bigger. So in this yeah. case, so what I, what I meant, yeah, 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 you you you're you're correct. But what I meant was you're not increasing the size of your deck. That is, that's what I meant to say. Whereas normally when you buy a card, you're adding a card to your total deck size. Here, you're you're breaking even. Well, yeah, he saved as a penny earned, so you could think of it think of it as making it thinner that way as well. Yeah. Yeah. It's the only way um, to get coppers out of your deck, right? Like, mm. <laughs> which nerd didn't necessarily want to do? Yeah, because you got the sling, you got the slingshot anyway. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I think bonfire. I think there's a bonfire card. It's another way. Would be another way to get coppers out. If memory, yes. if my memory is correct. Yeah, I saw another card that allows you to do that. Uh, campfire. You may trash a card from your hand or discard card. Yeah. I, I wonder if this is a fair statement in that is it not that the game moves too slow, but it's almost like a, a roller coaster where you're going up the yeah, that's hill what for 29 minutes and then you go down the hill for I one I was minute. about to say, you, you beat me to it. Yeah, it's the pacing of your game that needs a little yes. bit of work. You've got mm -hmm. exactly what, what the game Joe didn't just take said. too long. No, no, no. The game that is yeah. fine. It's just that you've got this massive grind and then you've got like two or three turns at the end where I'm being <laughs> murdered with an axe. <laughs> <laughs> That's a yeah, great line. Right. Just, just, yeah, just, just, just once you work on that pacing a bit, you'll be, you'll be fine. Because the game length is, is, is fine. It's just the pacing of it that needs. They just need a tweak. Mm -hmm. But that's, that's basically everything for me, though. Like it's, it's, it's a good game. There's a few, you know, you got a few things to work on. But yeah, that's good. Right. Thank you. No, you're welcome. What we need to do is bring this back in two months and do another episode. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, if, way, yeah. Up for that. If this, like if we can see any of these changes and the small little nickels it has that just yeah. need to be worked out can be uh, smoothed over and then play it again. Giga was threatening to be abandoning this game, so as long as maybe <laughs> I, I, I don't know, I, I think it's worth pursuing personally. I think there's Definitely. enough enough unique things. Um, yeah, that just I don't think they're big quickly. fixes that it needs either. No, right? Yeah, yeah. and it's, it's it's nice. It's a nice game because like. 
I'll, I'll give you like some context, right, some real life contextual examples. So you know, I've got like massive, like Twilight Imperium, massive game. <laughs> yes, uh, I've got other big games as well. Not not quite as big as TI, but like other longer games. And you know, it's nice to have something that like, you play a long game with your mates, and then you have like a like a like a tea break or what? A tea British tea break, <laughs> whatever, whatever. And then you know what? You played a big game, you've had your tea break, and now you want to play something that you know, not a, a massive game, but something a bit. Right. You know, it's yeah. a bit quicker, and your game is would be is, it fits into that category, the type of game where you'd be like, "Yep, okay, we've we've, we've, we've done the main event, but we still got a bit of time before people have got to get going. We need a, we need a nice, simple to understand, quick-ish game to you know to have a couple of rounds and then mm-hmm. you know conclude the day. And I think that's the market place where your your game can really sit in and make that sort of yeah, I think it'll do really well in that sort of marketplace. I am personally the master designer of such games, and I call them filler games. They're either for mm. before yeah. everybody gets there, and you can go, yeah. oh, you know, Fred's running 30 minutes late. Okay, great, let's yeah. play this. When yeah. Fred gets here, we'll get in the real game. Or like you said, after the big game, some people want to go home. They've had enough, but other people are still around. You're like, okay, you know, we still got an hour, so let's throw some, let's put, still play something. Yeah. And, you know, that's exactly – there's a definite market for that game. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and it's just, you know, like I said, I think it's all about just working on the pacing a little bit. Maybe it's having a selection of medium weapons that are in there that can do some damage, but when they're combined together in a certain, you know, unique combination, they can do, you know, exceptional damage. So you mm-hmm. can have these little bits of, you know, you constantly have some drama going on because you're doing some damage and blocking some, but once in a while you have the combination come along and it has that dramatic punch for the game and takes it to the next act, basically. Right. Right. Then uh, also uh, two uh, two things I also wanted to add um, uh, in the regards with um, uh, with the beginning with the draw um, with the six card, basically we decide how about um, doing basically the opposite. Um, each player draws six cards and one player decides a one card that is not being added to the main market and then both players switch their hand and then discard another card and then the remaining cards are what's in the market so player can decide what's not in the game nice. which would make it more interesting so you could basically block some cards which you dislike as an example potentially be- but you need this the, the underlying the underlying issue that i have with that current system is it that time. well it, it, it's the time is one thing but because because the starts are unilateral we have the exact same decks yeah. any any card synergies are available to both players so denying unless you have a certain play style or something where you're like oh i'm not i'm not good at these sort of, sort of strategies so i'm going to get rid of these cards or you know the other player is really good at comboing these certain cards off it, it, it's, it's kind of a mute point, like getting rid of certain, certain cards otherwise, if, if, if you have a unilateral start. Do you have a deity or something that like each player can choose a deity and that somehow yeah, gives them a special exactly. power that if you had, unbalances yeah, precisely. even precisely. fire cards? Or an alignment, you know, something like along those lines, where you choose that at the beginning and that gives the little bit of flavor to the similar decks? Something to influence your decision-making process with the drafting system at the beginning of the game, basically. Right. And then also one more thing, maybe to uh, make the Plexmith thing better, how about instead of the discard, um, how about um, adding the card on top of your deck? So you draw it in the next turn, so you don't get it immediately, but you get it in your next turn. That could be good for the blacksmithing card, for example. Yeah. That could be yeah, quite good for that. Yeah, that, that, that would probably solve the blacksmith, because then you know you're getting the card on the next turn. That, that yeah. Yeah. I like that. It's a potential fix, yeah, for that card, yeah. Definitely. Definitely something to think about. Yeah, that, that awesome. could work. Well, everyone, thank you so, so much for uh, yeah, playing no, thanks. the game. Yep. Uh, yep. Thank you to and our thank overlord, Jakao. Thank you to Nerd. Thank you to Gregory Sue for designing the game. Thank you to Joe for, uh, you know, kind of arranging all this. Um, looks like we're out of time for this week's episode, but join us next week for... Uh, I don't know, to watch me eat more muffins. Um, Something. Yeah. But thank you. Thank you, everybody. Right. And, Cheers. Uh, thank thanks you. For, thanks for tuning Happy in. Happy New Year. Happy 2022. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year.